السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشرق الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أجلنا من النار وقحلنا الجنة مع الأبرار Oh Allah forbid us from the hellfire Oh Allah free our neck The neck of our husband and our family Our children, our offspring Our parents, our loved ones From the hellfire Amin ya Rabbil Alameen uh, We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To help us understand the sunnah And the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Every detail in the life And the story life of the Prophet and of this message is a part of our deen and it's obligated on us to learn it. Some people, they think like learning the sunnah is just luxury or, you know, you just do it well, and, and you're a free time. But it's indeed, it's a very, very important because that's how we understand Al-Quran and we understand Islam. And this is a practical, practical religion. This is not a, a theory or uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will give his command and his companions apply. We're going to see today how, you know, him and his family, all of them were involved uh, into this religion, subhanAllah, including his wives. So uh, it's very, very, very important not to lose any session, uh, inshallah ta'ala, or learning uh, the biography of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's how we stay connected with him and with his family and with his loved one. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave us a command that we have to love his family. We have to love Ahl al-Bayt. Ahl al-Bayt is his family, himself, his family, his daughters, husbands of the daughters, uh, grandchildren, then all his wife. And all his wife, each wife is unique. And they are our mothers. You know, some of us, we know our mom, who, but we don't know our uh, Umm al-Mu'mineen. The mother who, of all the believers in this world is our mother. We have to know who they are, inshallah ta'ala. Today we talk about one of the mothers uh, of our mother, the mother of the believers, and we will talk about one of his daughter also, because uh, uh, like we said, subhanallah, uh, when we were talking uh, during the nine, uh, 11 years, 12 years, in the uh, city of Mecca, how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faced the prosecution, right? Uh, when he commanded in the year of four and five, uh, people to <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, uh, can you mute yourself, please? Yeah, mute yourself, uh, Aminata, I think. Okay, here, here you go, Rasulullah. So when he commanded uh, people to migrate to uh, Al-Habasha, he sent his loved one, his daughter. His daughter was with uh, the wife of uh, Uthman radiallahu an. So she went, she went to Al-Habasha, Al then his cousin, uh, the brother of Ali, Jafar, and those are his beloved ones. And Uthman, his son-in-law, went with them. So that's how we see that the whole family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were involved in the prosecution, in the action, it's not like people, uh, you know, the first lady here and the president here and the family are spoiled. They don't even get ticket if they, you know, violate the law. Not like this, subhanAllah. So uh, let's see now, today we're gonna talk. Uh, we are all already, we finished the first year of the life of the Al-Medina. Uh, he established the city of the Medina. He set up rules. It has like 47 uh, points. Uh, it's agreement between the Muslimin and the Mushrikeen and the Jew who live, three different type of people we said they live in the uh, city of Medina, right? We, we elaborate about that the last session. So uh, today, let's talk about now uh, one of his beloved daughter, Zainab, radiallahu anha. She's still in Mecca, even though everybody mandatory to leave Mecca and come to mm -hmm. Medina, because of Al-Hijrah was prescribed on them, but uh, Zainab, that's her name, um, she's the oldest daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she's still married to her husband, Abil Aas, 
and the husband is not Muslim and he refused to let her go. He refused to, to divorce her. So who is Zainab? Let's talk a little bit about who is Zainab. Then we talk about her husband and let's see what happened during uh, you know, her life in Mecca, then her life in the uh, city of Medina. Let's see what happened. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And then we talk about another wife of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Zainab was born way before al hijr uh, Dawah, the revelation. So she grew up as a beautiful young lady Anyone, any Arabian, especially people of Mecca, wants wants to marry her. Why? Because her lineage. You you're talking about the mother side, Khadija. It's the wealthiest city and the most successful uh, um, woman in the city of Mecca. Who everybody want to marry her after she lost her husband. Uh, then her father is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, which is everyone loved Muhammad back then. He's not prophet yet. <laughs> so the love here changed because even though they trust him, they call him Al-Amin, he's a beloved one, very respectful one, but uh, that's Zainab now. And she has a beauty, she has a lineage, she's wealthy. Um, the minute she grew up, everyone proposed to her. Everyone proposed to her. But the one who won her heart is her first cousin from her mom's side. So Khadija, عنها, she has a sister. And the sister has a son. His name Abu Al-As. That's his name. You know, that's how they used to call uh, people. Because you might think, well, who's Abu? Abu means a father of Al-As. But that's his name. So Abu Al-As, uh, he was very handsome. Uh, he was a very wealthy he used to do the two different type of uh, business uh, transaction uh, coming to uh, Al Habasha, uh, coming to Ethiopia to do uh, uh, business. Then he will go to Yemen. He will do his uh, other business. Then he will go all the way to Bilad uh, Sham. So, uh, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded the people of Mecca about. Uh, uh, the opportunity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers the people of Mecca, uh, it was reminded by Surah Quraysh, Quraysh ila rihlata sayf. So they used to do a trade business in summer and winter, and uh, Abil As one of them. So when he lead his uh, business, he will have a thousand camel loaded with products to bring them from Sham, to uh, city of Mecca, then after he will sell and he will buy from other businessmen, then he will go to Yemen to do uh, a similar business. So he will have like a hundred slave men walking with him. That's her husband. And this husband was built on uh, not only family arrangement, but he was an extremely beloved one. So he loved her so much and she loved him so much. Everybody in the city of Mecca and around Arabia, they will talk about the love relationship between uh, Zainab and her husband, Abil Aas, subhanAllah. That's how, like, uh, you know, when you talk about someone, Romeo and Juliet, you know, the English talk about it. Um, and there's many Arabian story also, also, you know, we still hear them till today, how about uh, uh, love between male and female. And sometimes when the Imam uh, did the nikah between a husband and wife, uh, the Imam will make the dua and he will say, may Allah tie your heart, your hearts as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tied the heart of Adam and Hawa, because Adam and Hawa also loved each other very, very much. <laughs> the only man and the only woman would exist anyway, right? <laughs> so they loved each other and they lived a thousand years on this earth, subhanAllah. So uh, that's the story. So when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became a prophet, um, uh, People uh, of Mecca, they want to hurt Rasulullah sallallahu feeling. So they went to Abi Lahab because he was engaged to Umm Kalsum, his daughter, uh, to his son, to Abi Lahab's son, his, her first cousin. They went, they told him, <clears throat> you, should, you should divorce your wife. It was, the wedding was not done yet, just ketib kitab in Arabic. You know, they have their nikah done. Uh, you should divorce your woman this way. Uh, it will be a shame on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that his daughter get divorced. Uh, it was a very bad, uh, in, culturally, if the man uh, turn the wife uh, to, the, to their parents, um, 
and people will talk about the honor, the, the honor of that girl. They will say maybe he couldn't find her virgin, maybe maybe she has a legitimate relationship, and on. You know, it, it, it's a it's a it's a sign of shame. So they when it hurts Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with that, and uh, Abi Lahab's son did divorce his his uh, uh, wife, who uh, alhamdulillah was were the, the marriage was not completed. But they went to Abi Al-As and they told him, "We offer you money." Uh, we will offer you the most beautiful woman in Mecca. You just pick, and she will be your, your wife. We will give you a lot of money. Please, please, just divorce your wife, Zainab. And but uh, Abil Asid, la wallah, if you offer me all the women in the world, there's not woman equal to Zainab. And you're talking money, you're going to bribe me with the money. I'm the richest, the wealthiest man. You know, very successful businessman. I, I don't need your money. So he refused. He refused to let his daughter go. So he kept her. And we know that after uh, eight years now, what happened? Al-Hijrah, right? They migrated and everybody now in Medina and Zainab by herself, even though she's a Muslim, she accepted Islam. She begged her husband to come to Islam. But he said, I am not going to become Muslim because of you. I want to become Muslim when I choose Islam freely, uh, you know, when I make up my mind. Uh, that was his statement. So uh, she stayed with him and the Prophet وسلم, did not tell her, you have to get divorced from your husband now. He did not command her like, come with me, give your husband, he's a mushrik, nothing happened yet. So now uh, let's see what happened. We know now in the second year of Al-Hijrah, what happened? Uh, Ghazwat Uhud, right? The battle of Uhud happened. When the battle of Uhud happened, they captured, uh, the war was ended and the Muslim won, but even though they captured so many men from the army who they came from uh, Mecca uh, to fight and kill Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and um, among of them, guess who? Abil As was captured. So Abu al-As, uh, we have to say radiallahu anhu later on, he became a uh, Sahabi. He was captured by Khurrash bin al-Summa. If you don't remember the name, Malishi, I already forget the name, even though I read how many times. So um, here, when someone captured an, uh, an, an uh, war prisoner, that man, he will put the price for the family to let that man go free. It's his property and become his property. So uh, since they have so many captured, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they announced that we're going to send message to people of Mecca if they want their children and their husband and their men, their sons to go back home. Hey, everybody ask for whatever the money you want. And if they don't pay that, their son or whatever that person will stay uh, jail under the person who captured that. So Abu al-As under the person Khurrash bin al-Summa, right? So uh, when they send a message to Mecca, of course, people of Mecca love with their husband, with their son they have, with their, with their brother. Everybody send money, send gold, send jewelry, whatever it is, they can free their own people. And among of them, when they gathered everything, everything and it says so and so, you know, for this man to be free, uh, and when they opening the bags with the name, with the letters inside, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he opened this bag and uh, he, the minute he saw, he saw, uh, he started tearing and crying. And he said, oh my God, the, the companions looking at him, he said, Ya Rasulullah, what's happened? What's happened? Why are you crying? And he's, he's just crying louder and louder now. And when they looked at him, this, he said, this is the necklace of my beloved wife Khadija. What does that mean? That mean Khadija gave this gold, whatever valuable necklace to her daughter in her wedding day as a gift. Now, Zainab sent this necklace to free her husband. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw that, he started crying. And um, they said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you want us to do? We will free the man. And, uh, you know, Khuraj uh, came. He said, I'll free him. I sent him. I sent him back. I, uh, don't worry. I mean, he said, it's not up to me. Rasulullah. Look, look at that. Look at that behavior of Rasulullah ﷺ and his manner. He said, it's not up to me. It's all up to you, Ya Khurash. If you want to send uh, Abil As back to Khadija and keep the gold necklace or the necklace, 
you can, you're allowed, it's your right. But, you know, I would love to send Abil Aas with the necklace back to my daughter. And of course, you know, his companions of Rasulullah they sacrifice themselves for, you know, for the Prophet Sallallahu for this deal. They're gonna, you know, say, no, I'm gonna keep the gold necklace. No, no way. That's that's Khadija's property. Habibi Ya Rasulullah. So uh, uh, Abil As took the gold and he called him. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he called him and he whispered, he whispered in his ear. Uh, Hala, can you mute yourself, Habibti? Can you mute yourself, Hala? Okay, good. So uh, he whispered in the ear of Abil As and um, he stepped behind and he took the gold necklace and he went back like all the uh, free men. They went back to Mecca. When he went back to Mecca, he called his wife and she was very happy that, you know, her husband came home just like every other household. Uh, but he told her, uh, yeah, Zainab, uh, it's, it, you know, my heart, my heart broken. I cannot keep you any longer because I have to fulfill the promise I gave it to, to your father. What is what did you what promise you gave to my father? He said uh, he let me go and he gave me back the gold necklace uh, because this belonged to Khadija. You should keep it, and uh, I have to send you. He promised me that send Zainab back to me. She cannot stay with you anymore uh, because you are mushrik, uh, you are impure, and you are. Uh, Polytheist, you follow the polytheism. So you have to send your wife. He said, I have to prepare for you to send you to uh, Medina. But Zainab, she already have two kids from her husband. Uh, she has a son named Ali and she has a girl uh, named Umama. And she begged her husband, come with me, Aslam, come to Islam. I mean, you attended the war. You fought my father, you fought the Muslimin, you went to kill in purpose to kill Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's my father. And you know who is Muhammad. But he said, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. My heart did not accept Islam yet. As much as I love you, I have to let you go. So he called his brother, one of his brother, and he told him, prepare a horse and prepare food and uh, take uh, my uh, my wife, uh, take her back all the way to the city of Medina uh, to her father, and I trust you. Uh, and the brother did. He set up uh, a horse for him, a horse for her. He set up all the food. He put all the load on her, and he prepared himself. And at midday, I mean, midday mean everybody in Mecca can see what's happening. So he put Zainab on the on the animal and the vehicle and him leading her and with the kids and where? To city of Medina. On their way, just leaving the border of Mecca, people of Quraysh, they said, oh my God, the war of the battle of Uhud just ended. Our beloved one get killed. More than 13 of the leader of, you know, big leaders of Quraysh died and many other kids, you know, get killed also besides the leaders. And we have so many uh, war prisoners. We have to send money to free them. Now we're going to look at the daughter of our enemy leaving on a ride on a horse or a camel with one protecting her alone to leave our land. La Allah, we're going to go after her and kill her. And she has, it says like a howdaj, probably she has a camel, not a horse. The howdaj is like they build house, tiny house, and they put the woman inside and she will be protected, right? Uh, first of all, protected from the sun. And secondly, it will be a private for her to be riding there. Uh, while she is in howdaj, a group of men ran after the brother of her husband and they told him they have, uh, they have uh, you know, this uh, arrow to shoot uh, shoot her uh, down and they told him you cannot stop us we're gonna kill her she is the daughter of uh, our enemy uh, our men get killed our people get in prison we're not gonna let her go so the brother of Abi al has uh, he is the most uh, Yani clever to throwing the arrow and will bring it to the eyeball, as as we say. He said, Wallahi, if anyone of you approach her, I will kill you. I will kill you. I don't care who you are. So don't let us shed blood between the people of Mecca over this woman. 
And secondly, she's my brother's wife. I have to protect her. I promised my brother to protect her. I can't do that. And then somebody knocked the how that, that tiny house, knocked uh, on the floor. Of course, she fell and she was uh, wounded. Um, she got a broken uh, arm or, or something. She started bleeding. And uh, then uh, Abi Sufyan came when he saw what's happening. When Abi Sufyan came, he said, people, you cannot do this. We cannot kill a woman. What is the Arabian talk? You know, they all will worry about what's the neighborly Arabian will talk about us. This is not a behavior to kill a woman, a, 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 a civil woman, civilian, civilian. She has no weapon. She has nothing. I mean, let her go. We can't do that. Plus, remember, all people of Quraysh, when you go for a business trip, uh, to Bilad sham you pass the border of Medina. They're going to attack you and they're going to take all your property. So don't let this happen. So if it wasn't for Abi Sufyan, this woman, the Zainab, the beloved daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she would be killed. So everybody backed up, and but she couldn't continue the journey because she was bleeding. So he brought her back home and uh, he told her husband, you have to nurse her, you have to take care of her. When she's healed, whatever something broken, whatever is, end up she was ble bleeding uh, because she was uh, she had miscarriage. She didn't know she was pregnant, uh, subhanAllah. And on the top of that, she has wounded on her body also. So he kept her another month to for her to you know get her strength back and he insists to uh, to send her back because he promised Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to send his daughter. So in this case now, Abi Sufyan's wife Hind, she came to her to Zainab and told her, uh, "Allow me to send you uh, more than one person with you to protect you, so you don't go through what you went through from before." Look the heart of Hind. Yeah, who will expect that come from Hind? But as a female. She wants to protect this female because she found what happened before, it was not, uh, it was inhuman. Uh, it was a not good, not good act, you know, for a uh, female. So he asked, she asked her to, uh, you know, if, if she accept that she will do something for her, but she refused because she said, I don't want anything. But this time her husband said, I'm gonna send you in the middle of night, one of this night where people of Quraysh are already sleeping and they won't know what night. Uh, so in secret, the second trip was in secret. So um, Habibti Zainab uh, took the ride with her brother-in-law and he uh, brought her all the way to the city of Medina. Uh, of course, she was a very much broken heart because she leave her husband behind. Now officially she's divorced. Uh, her son Ali died before she came. Uh, um, uh, the, her daughter, she has, she has her daughter with her, uh, and she came to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Umama, that's her daughter name, Umama, radiallahu uh, anha. So she arrived at the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she refused to marry any of the Sahabi. Everybody proposed to her because now she's available; she could be married. But she said no. She has a hope that one day her husband will come to Islam and he will become Muslim. So let's see now what happened after a year or two uh, in the story. Now her husband, we said, he's doing the business, right? He's a businessman. And this time he was leading another like thousand camel loaded. And uh, like he has a hundred men, uh, you know, traveling with him to do this business, coming to Bilad al-Sham. Again, you're going to pass city of Medina, and that's the only pass they use it. And in this time, Saraya, Saraya is like a group of men of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like their army men. Usually they come out of the city of Medina to protect the border and to see what's happening because their, their eyes open always. They think the enemy will attack them anytime, right? So when they saw this caravan coming and loaded with, you know, with business, they attacked and they captured all the hundred men and they took all the goods and they brought it. And Abil As was a leader, he ran away. Nobody captured Abil As, the ex-husband of Zainab. But the, the hundred men captured, uh, captured and the business trip uh, goods he has it. Not only his only wealth, of course, he had when you do business back then, you know, you invest, you know, stocks and bonds. So the people of Mecca invest with Abil As. 
So this is not fully 100% belong to him. So now what he's going to do? How he's going to go back by himself to Mecca and tell the people, hey, I lost your business and I lost 100 men. They were with me. It's very hard for him. So he waited a day or two, hiding himself in the desert. Nobody saw him. And after a few days, he come sneaking in secret at the mid of night to city of Medina. And he find where Zainab is, his ex-wife. And he knocked the door. And Zainab, very early morning, before even the dawn, she opened the door. She goes, who's going to knock my door now? She opened the door. She find her husband standing there, ex-husband. You're going to call, right? Abil As standing there. She said, what got you in this middle of the night now? Are you Muslim? You came here to tell me I'm a Muslim? He goes, no, you know what happened. You know the story because everybody know what happened in the city of Medina. The hundred men captured, all his business goods are you know brought to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the Bayt al Mal. Uh, I, uh, so in Arabi, it's a very big culture in Arabi. If you enter a city and the people of the city are your enemy and you run to someone and you seek refuge to that person and you ask them to protect you, then that person will announce, you will say, so-and-so is my guest. Nobody in the city will hurt that person. You remember in the life of Abi Talib, Abi Talib always protected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why nobody dare to kill, right? Physically harm Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as long as Abi Talib was alive. So now that's before Islam and after Islam, it's a very good culture, right? Very good, alhamdulillah. So when Zainab, when her husband told her that, she said, come inside. She put him inside and she went to the masjid of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She didn't go to her father. She went inside the masjid and waited in the woman's side when uh, Bilal radiallahu anhu called for adhan and for the iqama and they enter salat Allahu Akbar. They're praying now salat al-fajr. Then Zainab, she loudly speaks, says, Ana Zainab bint al-Rasul. I am Zainab, the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Raditu, I accept to keep Abi al-As in my house as uh, captured and as a guest for me. So nobody can harm uh, Abi al-As. He's my guest. She announced that and she waited till Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa finished his salat. When the salat finished, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Azalika Zainab, my daughter? Is, isn't that my daughter voice? She said, yes, it's me. Look how powerful her personality first of all, right? She said, yes, it's me in front of everybody. And he said, what you, you said? She said, uh, I have Abil As in my house and I gave him protection. And he looked Look at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're gonna cry again. He looked at all his companions. He said, "Wallahi, this is not a plan between me and my daughter. Wallahi, I did not know anything about Abil As to be in her house. Just like you guys, if anybody knew, I know. But nobody knew what. Wallahi, this is not a plan between me and my daughter. So whatever she accepted to protect him, I will." protect him also, he's in a safe. And all the companion got up, they said, he is safe, he's in safe hand, nobody will hurt Abul As. Beautiful culture at the same time. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know what he told Zainab, be careful, akrimihi, honor him, but be careful, you're not halal for him. You don't go in bed with him, he's not your husband. He told her right there. In the morning now, Abil As came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he told him, he said, listen, I have to free these hundred men and I have to free, take the goods of people of Mecca and then wherever you want, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. That's between him and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I accepted Islam because this beautiful manner, beautiful behaviors he saw in front of his eyes. This is his father-in-law. But he didn't want just to become Muslim in front of everybody to know he's a Muslim because they're going to say, oh yeah, you became Muslim because you want to, you want your money back and you want these people, you know, come to you. And the companion told him, also, 
come to Islam now, this way, all these hundred men and the property of people of Quraysh it will become yours because now you as a Muslim, it's a halal for you to take the property of people of Quraysh because they're our enemy and it just, you become richer than what you are. But he said, La Wallah, that is not a manly, uh, a moral of a man like me will do that. I will never do that. So he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he begged him to free the, the hundred men and he will pay from his own money, whatever you know, money they ask for, and to return all these goods to the people of Mecca. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he stood up again and he called all his companion and he said, I see, I see more logic. We don't hurt our own people in Mecca, even though they're kuffar and they're our enemy, they come and they fight us. But al-mu'amala, uh, deen al-mu'amala, it's a behavior. He said, I see the best is to return these people and to return the money to Abil As and let him go back to Mecca, safe. And everybody agreed. The companions never, never disagree with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're not that people of Bani Israel who will tell the Isa alayhi salam, we'll do whatever you want to do, you do whatever you want to do. Between That's between you and your Lord. This is ours now. They didn't they didn't argue at all with Rasulullah. That's why the first generation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are the best generation on earth. They said, Sami'na wa ta'na. Of course, we're going to do what pleased you, Ya Rasulullah. What's pleased me? To send Abu al-As and his people and his caravan safe to, to Mecca. And they did. When he went, he knocked the door of the people of Mecca and he told them, this is your property, this is your, uh, whatever you gave me to do the business, this is your money, uh, uh, the hundred men are free, everybody back. And when he finished everything he has to finish, he stood in, in, in the Kaaba and he called all these leaders of uh, Mecca and he told them, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Now I am a Muslim, I return your rights, Nobody owe me anything. I'm doing migration to the city of Medina. And he came back to the city of Medina as a Muslim. When he entered Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's masjid now, straight to the masjid, he announced his shahada in front of everybody. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very happy that Abi Al-As became a Muslim. And he called Zainab, he said, do you want to go back to your husband? We have to do nikah all over again. Of course, she was very happy. <laughs> they did the nikah all over again, and he gave her dowry again, and they lived happily together one year. That was one year. Guess what? Zainab died. Zainab died, radiallahu anha. She was the age of 29 years old. Look how many Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, went through hardship in his lifetime. How many beloved one died in his lifetime? You know, somebody died at the age of 70, 80. Okay, inna lillahu inna ila raja'un, the age, the sickness. But this young lady just returned with her husband after three, four years, five years. She was separated from her husband. Now to go back with her husband and to be together as a family with her daughter, Umama, and in one year she died. Rahmatullah alayha. And then in the second year, Abil As died shaheed in one of the barrel. He did not remarry. He died shaheed in the, in, in the second barrel, subhanAllah. So this is the way how the family of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam suffered. Not only him, you know, uh, his family was not just, you know, just to be like the family of the president sitting in his palace and enjoying their life, no. They suffered indeed Allah radiallahu anha wa ardaha. Insha'Allah we will meet her in paradise, ya Rabbil Alameen. That is Zainab and Abi Al-As. What a love story. Subhanallah. All right. So I promised you I'm going to tell you another one story that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know in the fifth year of Al-Hijra, we said he sent like more than uh, 80, 85 men and women went to Al-Habasha, right? Uh, Ethiopia for Al-Hijra, for the, their first Hijra. And they have to stay there till Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will send them a letter to tell them, come. So even though we are in Medina, the first year, the second year finish, we're still in the city of Medina, but the city of Medina is still in a war session, right? In battles, because people of Quraysh did not let 
Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be alone, left alone. So he did not send a letter to the people of Quray, uh, Al Habasha, to come to Medina. Uh, Subhanallah. They're waiting for a message, and they're there. So we know that uh, Al Asmai, uh, Al Asmaha, uh, the first Ethiopian uh, king they had. Uh, Abraha, he became uh, Muslim, right? Uh, Najashi, Najashi, well, that's his nickname. And Najashi became Muslim without seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? And he protected those people around him. So uh, uh, around after eight years, uh, he died. And the second one, also Najashi, Najashi is a title name. So the second Najashi, he's not Muslim yet, but now he received the letter. Before we talk about the letter, we know the people who migrated there, all of them accepted Islam and they lived there. Among of them, uh, the daughter of Abi Sufyan himself, the leader of Quraysh, the most enemy of Islam. His own daughter was early people who accepted Islam because her husband accepted Islam, his name Ubaidullah. He accepted Islam before her. So when he came home, he said, you know what? This is a great religion. I believe Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a message of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I'm going to follow this religion no matter what. I mean, this is very hard time to accept Islam in the city of Mecca in the early, because you know you're going to go through prosecution and the people, you know, going to beat you up and they kill you. They're going to take your property. You have no right to defend yourself. Even though he accepted Islam, then she accepted Islam. Uh, she loved it. She accepted Islam. She said, Alhamdulillah, we're Muslim. And in the first Hijra, because they, they were suffering, uh, they were among the first group who went to Al Habasha. After this eight years, far from you know uh, the Muslimin and far from Mecca, uh, living uh, in a strange land like that, and the, the religion of that land is a Christian, not a Muslim. Only the Muslimin are the Sahabi who went there. They help each other. They gather together. They you know support each other. But one day, uh, the daughter of Abu Sufyan, her real name is Ramla, Ramla. Her nick, nickname is Ummu Habiba. She has a daughter named Habiba, actually. So the mother of Habiba, Ramla bint Abi Sufyan. So Ramla, uh, her husband came home and he's telling her, you know what, I've been in the market every day. Uh, I've been interacting with this Christian, even though, you know, we accepted Islam in a time. In a time, I mean, no one accepts Islam. But you know what? He's looking at her as he's going to tell her the news. What is the news? He tell her, uh, I love this religion of Christianity. I've been interacting with all these people and everybody's encouraging me to come, become Muslim. I chose from now on up, I chose to be Islam, Muslim. And that night she was speechless, Ramla. She said, what? When they went to sleep, she didn't know what to do. She has a dream and her dream, she was so scared. She saw her husband's face is like a, like a monster face, very ugly. And she was disturbed from the dream. She woke up and she said, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. She got up, she prayed, she prayed, she prayed. She asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give her husband steady fast and to keep her in this religion and to stay. If, if her husband leaves this religion, how, how she's going to survive there? But what she's scared about it, and as we say, dream came true, her, her dream became true. So uh, the second day, the third day, the husband will come home. Remember back then, uh, people still drinking alcohol. Now he has more alcohol to consume, right? In the land of Christian land. He come home drunk, losing his mind, vomiting, going to the bathroom. Uh, losing his mind because of, of you know, ex uh, extremely drinking habit. And then uh, he tell her, uh, daytime he will tell her, Khalas, I made up my mind, uh, I left Islam, I want to be a Christian. Now she said, I cannot stay with this man like this. She doesn't know what to do. She can't send a message to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ask him what, what should I do. She can't decide herself and call her father, even though father Abi Sufyan, leaders of people of Quraysh, she can't call him. She can't send a message, come protect me from my husband. Her husband is an enemy of Rasulullah and enemy of the Muslimin. How she's gonna you know, call him to protect her? She can't do anything. And uh, she has, 
She was such a broken heart. She doesn't know what to do every day. She cries, she pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She just run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray. And she has a daughter. And the daughter almost now is the age of, uh, you know, 10, 11, something like that. And then when husband decided to, خلاص, he's going to be a Christian and because of his executive, uh, excessive drinking, uh, she told him, uh, I can't have you. Uh, let you come in the house anymore. I want to I wanna divorce. So he divorced her easily. When he divorced her, he went, he disappeared. Uh, God knows within one year, it says her husband died. Now she has even more calamity now. How she's going to tell her daughter, you know, your father was a Muslim. He was a reason for me to become to Islam. Now your father followed Christianity. Now your father drinking habit is bad. Now your father dead. And the girl by now is 13 years old. But she has nothing but Habiba and herself. She locked the door on herself and she will stay there, uh, won't go out, won't be with the gathering. All the Sahabi, Sahabiyat, they will knock her door. They will tell her, come out, talk to us. She refused to open the door to anybody. Till she finished her idda. You know, the woman, when her husband died, she knew that much that she has to stay home at least, not, you know, interacting with men also after three months or four months, time's over. Uh, somebody's knocking the door. When somebody knocking the door, she refused to open the door of anyone. And somebody said behind the door, uh, please open the door because my master send me to you. My master is a Najashi, send me to you to talk to you. She said, no, I won't open the door for your master or for the king or for anybody. And then the girl, uh, the girl named Abraha. <laughs> the girl, the girl who knocking the door named Abraha, she is one of the servants from the palace. Right? Uh, she went back to her master, and this master now, this second Najashi, is just one year already to take over the first Najashi, the Muslim who died. Died and a Muslim and the Prophet ﷺ did Salat al Janaza on him, Ghaib. That's how we learn Salat al Janaza, right, Yahya? So when that happened, subhanAllah, she refused to open. So the lady, the servant, went back to the palace and she told the her master, she refused to open the door for me. Then he sent her back and he tell her, tell her I have a message for you from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She will open the door. And she did. She came back and she knocked the door. She said, uh, Umu Habiba, I have a message from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but you have to come to the palace to see, uh, to meet uh, Abraha. Uh, and uh, why I keep saying Abraha, and Najashi, I'm worried about this kid. And Najashi, you have to talk to him. He has a message for you. She said, for me, from the prophet? I mean, her heart started beating. And she gathered herself. She took her daughter and she said, let's go. And when she came to the palace to me, uh, and Najashi, subhanAllah, he told her, I have a letter from uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in this letter, he said, uh, a messenger came from Medina named Amr, Amr bin Umayyah, al-Dumayri, if you want to remember it. He came having three things to do. First of all, he's inviting a Najashi, this second Najashi, uh, to, to Islam. And he told Amr, Wallahi, I know all the prescription described in the Bible by Isa, the son of Maryam, came true that Muhammad is the messenger, the last messengers. But I need time because I'm new, I'm the new king here, and I need to build around me people who you know, will obey me for anything I want to tell them. So I need that time. You got to wait. He didn't just did the shahada immediately. He said, I need time. Give me that time. He did not at least read the letter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? And the second uh, message in the letter, he said, please marry me, uh, Ramla bint Abi Sufyan. So, so uh, the prophet says, I assign you to speak behalf of me, to propose to Ramla to marry her. What a happy time, <laughs> what a happy time. So a few nights before, 
Ramla has a dream. This is the second dream she dream. She's a pious woman. I'm sure her dream will come true. So in second dream, she says, somebody's calling her. Ya Umm al-Mu'mineen, Ya Umm al-Mu'mineen. Oh, the, mo the mother of the believers. Oh, the mother of the believers. She woke up saying, Umm al-Mu'mineen, who's going to be, who's calling me Umm al-Mu'mineen? I'm not the mother of the believers. I'm not the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But this dream is a sign for her, right? So he told her, now it's up to you to assign one of the Sahabi to represent you if you accept to marry uh, this proposal from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you think she's going to say no? Of course. She was the happiest. Who would refuse such a proposal from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to marry her? And he said, he, uh, al-Najashi, uh, and she assigned Khalid bin Sa'id bin al-As. We know Sa'id bin al-As, right? He has two sons. Sa'id bin al-As, uh, Khalid bin Sa'id bin al-As, uh, he was one of the early people who accepted and he was the oldest man in the Sahabi uh, back then. She said, please, you will be my wakil. You're going to be like uh, my wali, right? Because she has no nobody there. She has no father. And the father is not Muslim even. So uh, he is uh, he's the one who's going to present her. And in Najashi, between Najashi and Khalid, they have to do the contract. When they did the contract, look what the king put dowry for her. Behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He put 400 din dinar made of pure gold. 400 gold coin he gave it to her i forgot to tell you when this lady abraha the servant that's her name abraha when she told her you have a message from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam she was so happy she took her gold bracelet in her hand and gave it as a gift to reward her to abraha now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced her for 400 gold coin to be her dowry and the king he called all the companions and their wife and their children to the palace and he did the largest walima as a wedding party for her because out of respect of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with this proposal. She had the best, the most expensive dowry among all the 13 wives Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married. Subhanallah. And he threw her this big party, dinner party, uh, right? And then guess what? She has to wait. Why? Because the third letter says, in a certain year, you have to send all the believers to the city of Medina in certain time. And that time, it took four to five years. Her nikah is done. She's waiting to come to the city of Medina and join her husband. But at least, you know, she's out of poverty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced her with a husband better than the one she lost, right? And uh, she's in a, in, a, in a safe place. And when she comes to the city of Medina, she knows she's going to be the uh, wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here you go. Now, they came at the year of the seven of Al-Hijra. The year of eight of Al-Hijra, they're arriving, uh, as a letter says, the year eight of Al-Hijra, it took her more than 18 years. The people who migrated to Habasha to see finally their family members who came to Islam and to see the face of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the city of, of Medina. So that was the opening of uh, the castle of Al Khaybar. You know, Khaybar is when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to fight the Jew, the tribe, and Khaybar was, uh, you know, it's a uh, uh, it was like a huge castle. It was very hard to defeat them, uh, but they were defeated. And at that time, uh, An Najashi he sent a group of Christian people with Christian and uh, knowledgeable, uh, like a priests, with the people, the Muslimin, to come to Medina as honoring those group who they were in his land to come now, join Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And finally, those group of Christian to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to sit with him. So when the Prophet was still in his tent, right after this battle against people of Khaybar done, uh, the people arriving, they told uh, the companion, Ya Rasulullah, we will take care of the guest. Don't bother yourself. He said, no, 
No, we have to show the honor of the people who honored our beloved Muslim who lived in their land. Again, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is not a talker, but his doer. He has to do what he believes. He honored them by himself personally, not by himself personally. He said, I have to sit with them and I have to welcome them. I have to honor them. And he welcome, welcome them. They brought them to the city of Medina. And those people came. And uh, uh, his son-in-law, uh, Abi uh, Uthman bin Affan, came before those people. who they uh, Among of them was Jafar his uh, cousin, and that's why there is a famous in the Sira says, uh, he was so happy, is it the opening of Khaybar made me happy or the returning of Jafar to the city of Medina made me more happy. So he was very happy that his family members arrived, his wife here and the rest of the 16 men and women and their wife and their children, those that were the last people who stayed in uh, Habasha, they all came, subhanAllah, uh, Uthman uh, bin Affan as a wedding party, uh, to show his happiness of the marriage of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Ramla, right, the daughter of Abi Sufyan, he slaughtered hundreds of lamb and maybe including camel, and the whole town of city of of uh, Medina were invited for the walima, and they all ate because of the of that wedding. So everybody was happy with the marriage of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this happiness based not only as people might think you know yeah he's getting married another wife he has this is number five maybe six oh my god he loved woman no this marriage was very important because first of all we have to remember as we mentioned in the beginning ramla is not like any girl she is the daughter of his enemy the leader of Quraysh, the leader of all the battle coming Abi Sufyan, this is his daughter, who's Muslim, who she had, she lost her husband. He followed Christianity, then he died. Then she has a 13 year old, now 14, 15, maybe daughter, right? She was left alone. So first of all, to cheer her up, elevate her, respect her honor that she's a daughter of Abi Sufyan. Now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hoping when he married the daughter of Abi Sufyan, Abi Sufyan come to Islam, soften his heart, his heart right? You become like I am your son-in-law now. The, the Arab, yani, when you have intermarriage, it's a different story, subhanAllah. So that happened, but yet Abi Sufyan, uh, when he heard that his daughter married to Muhammad وسلم, and he came to the city of Medina, he was very happy with that marriage. He goes, this is a marriage. Yes, I am not there. I am not attending the ceremony. It was not asked through me to marry her, but... I, I will accept Muhammad anytime to be my son-in-law because he knows Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? Again, Abu Sufyan was a man of, of his word. So that happened. So one more story about Ramla. So two years passed, two years passed, and people of Quraysh, they had agreement in al Hudaybiyah. 10 years agreement, no war, we're not gonna fight you no more. Let's have peace treaty for 10 years. And remember, in that peace treaty, we're going to talk about in detail uh, next week, uh, the follower of Rasulullah were a little upset why he accepted this peace treaty. But Rasulullah by himself, he, he, he has a vision. He accepted this treaty. And within two years, people of Quraysh broke the treaty. When the treaty was broke, people of Quraysh knew immediately that this is not a good time for a treaty to be broken. That means the Muslim is going to attack them and they're not ready for any war. Okay, so what should we do? Okay, let's send Abu Sufyan to Muhammad وسلم, and ask him to, to re renew the treaty. Because this broken treaty, what happened is they, they attack a Muslim group, came through Mecca and killed people of, among them. And that's broke the treaty, which is, if you meet any Muslim anywhere, you should not kill them. If we meet any kuffar from you coming to us, we don't kill them. But when that happened, khalas, no more, no more uh, agreement. So Abi Sufyan himself came all the way to the city of Medina. Now he, smart also, right? He said, you know what? I'm not gonna go straight to the house of Rasulullah or to his masjid. I'm gonna go straight to my daughter's house. First of all, I'm the father. 
I'm going to soften, you know, I'm going to, 20 years now passed, I didn't see my daughter. I'm going to see her, you know, I'm going to show her my love, my passion. Now I'm going to tell her, please speak to your husband to extend the strategy or to renew it. Something like that. That's his intention. So he came, he come daytime and he goes straight to the house of Ramla. When he goes straight to the house of Ramla, Ramla was very happy. I mean, that's her father still. Uh, and she told him immediately, you came, you accepted Islam. He said, no, I am here for a business trip, but I have to see you first before I go and make a deal with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa with Muhammad. <laughs> of course, he doesn't believe he's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa yet. And he came to sit down and she said, wait, wait, wait. Before you sit down, she folded that pillow or the bed, whatever is on the floor. She folded, put it away and you can, she, and Abi Sufyan looked at her. He said, oh, 20 years separation between you and me. It changed you. You don't love me anymore. Am I too much to sit on that humble bed or the bed is too much for your father? She said, La Wallah, you are the leader of your people, but you are kafir and you are najis. You are impure. And this pillow or this bed belong to the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not allowed to sit on her. Look that woman, how strong iman she has. For the love of her husband, the love of this deen, she did not allow her father to sit on that pillow. And she said, if you're here thinking that I'm going to convince my husband to extend the treaty between you people of Quraysh and him, I have nothing to do with that. I'm not going to speak behalf you. I'm not going to be talking to anything to, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi You want to go straight to him? Go. He left with broken heart. He didn't expect that from his daughter. But when he went to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, the prophet, he says, no, 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 no. We're not going to do anything. We're coming. We are coming, marching to Mecca. And Abi Sufyan failed with his uh, political movement this time. He left the city of Medina, and he knew immediately that this army, it's going to come now the opposite way. It's not from Mecca to Medina and fight the people of Medina, and people of Medina come out on the border and fight the Kuffar. No, this is a different now. This is the people of Medina who it's large in number. They're going to march to Mecca. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants marching to Mecca in a safe, in a less bloodshed way. And that's the opening of Mecca. Inshallah, we'll talk about it when the time comes. But I want to finish the story of Ramla, Habiba, Ummu Habiba, the mother of Habiba. Uh, when she married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she knew her. she's not as beautiful as Aisha. She's not as young as Aisha radiallahu anha. She knew it's going to be like uh, there is maybe issue between her and Aisha. But hey, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa proposed her. And he paid her, he paid her the most expensive dowry any other woman got her. Because the Najashi was very generous with her, right? And yet her father is a leader of, inshallah, he came to Islam later on, right? And she lived, she lived another uh, 30, 37 years. And before she died, she begged Aisha radiallahu anha to forgive her if she did anything wrong to her during this marriage. Because being co-wife, maybe there is, you know, talk, there is mistreat, but look how pious this woman's. They ask each other to forgive each other. And Aisha radiallahu anha, Ummu Habiba died before Aisha. She said, anything you did to me, I forgive you. Please, you too. Anything, if I did anything to you also, I hurt you or you did something bad from me, whatever, forgive me. They forgive each other. And that's how she died. Radiallahu anha wa arbaha. This is our mother, the beloved of the, the mother of the beloved of the mu'mineen, Ummu Habiba Ramla bint Abi Sufyan. Abi Sufyan became Muslim later on. We'll talk about it in this upcoming, inshallah ta'ala, jazakumullah khairan. Anything I said, it's from uh, true, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything was false, it's my fault, my mistake. May Allah forgive me. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Allahumma shafi'ahu fina. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him shafi'an. 
لنا in the day of judgment make him our intercession in the day of judgment to enter paradise to drink from his hand from his basin al-kawthar insha'Allah for me, for you, for all of us جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته